Um, all right, we're all licensed up. Now we're trying to figure out where to get these. Ale, ale wife? Yep. Ale wife. Ale wife. Ale wife. Ale wife. Ale wives, if ale you're getting wife. multiple. <laughs> you're not allowed to have multiple. You're allowed to have 25. <laughs> 25. No, 20, yeah, you're not allowed to have multiple wives. Not here. Not in this state. Yeah, we can get down there. Sort of. <laughs> It's gonna be a different spin on the Willis Living Challenge because we've got to go where the food is and we're coastal so obviously we're gonna be battling all the other coastal feeders which is obviously why you know people want to set up shop next to where the food is so you wonder why when we do the Willis Living Challenge why you end up crossing paths with so many other establishments established cities well the cities grow where the food is Zach's got a dip net here Dip net. It's legal, legal, schmiegel. Zach's having a pee. These are all the loopholes you gotta explore when you're living off the land. So getting the timing right is crucial. So these alewife, they'll, they'll come up um, for about two weeks and that's it. After two weeks, you can't, uh, you can't get them. They come up, do their spawn, and then they move back down. We've got a nice little pool here. This is actually a really great fishing spot. Oh yeah, there's a whole pile of them. There's a, there's a whole pile of them. Really? Yeah, right here. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all, right in there. Mm-hmm. You got your waders? I got mine. Dude, all in there. Look at them. Oh, sparkles. that's awesome. This is going to be pretty easy. <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy to get our 50. So our 50 limit. 50 limit of alewife. Woohoo! <laughs> Wondering what we're going to do with them. We're going to smoke them. We're going to smoke them. So we're going to have a pretty steady supply. We're going to use them for bait for lobster. All right, we're rigged up. There's so many down there, man. There's, there's got to be 150 or 200. They're stacked up. So many, piles of them. I'll give you first dip since you're visiting. All right, I got first dip. You get to test out, see if my waiter's got a leak or not. I've never done this before, so I'm just gonna scoop. Okay, missed them all. Oh yeah, my leg's feeling wet now. Wow, it looked, it simmed easier than, there we go. <laughs> Seemed like it was gonna be easy and then I had to back off a bit, but here we go. How many? I don't know, like a dozen? <laughs> It's not gonna take long. I throw that bucket down. Yeah. All myself. Oh. <laughs> Skated. <laughs> All right, so we gotta count them before we cross them in, otherwise we won't be able to. We got one, two. Stop moving. Three, <laughs> four, five, six, eight. Is that right? Sure. There we go. There we go. That's the trick. There's another good bunch. How many did we have before? Eight? Eight. So that's nine, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's not a bad haul for a few minutes of work, but uh, I don't know, fifth or sixth of the pail. Not a bad sized little fish. Looks like a big minnow. Some scales on there, you could probably scale those off. You're ready for smoking. That's the idea. Or lobster bait. Alright, so that was pretty successful. That We weren't even trying. We weren't even trying. We're, not, we're just getting warmed up. Yeah. And so are the alewife, apparently. So I've got a bunch of wives, alewives, set up. Um, 21, I think, was the grand total on that one. We can get 25 every day. So probably, if it only takes us an hour to get 50 fish, we might have our fish quota more than taken care of. So the idea is we build up an abundance of fish and then the rest of it is just preservation so smoking we get a smokehouse set up and we just smoke the living daylights out of the fish and build up a surplus so if we can get ahead of things we have like a fish snack and we can go out and get more and more and more and then we can start going after other things maybe some things are more difficult like a turkey that pays back uh, in a greater volume of meat so this is what we're up against when you do the wilderness living challenge we always talk about going up against modern Modern society, modern times, modern guns, modern tools, vehicles, boats. 
Well, that's a modern version of an alewife catcher. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a whole string of nets strung all the way across. And there's a bunch of people here with trucks because they're getting bait for lobster traps. So they're doing it on a much bigger scale than we're capable of doing. So they've got buckets are lined up and they're gonna get, I don't know, a bucket of piece or something every day. I don't know what it is. There's some regulation. The town owns the alewives. So the St. George run here, all of them, all the river is owned by the town. So we can't dip in this river for our own personal use because all of the fish that go past this net are counted through a counter, which are PVC tubes with like a laser, <laughs> laser that counts them as they go through. So they know how many they're allowing to spawn and they don't overtake, they don't take too many. So it's all regulated. And these are all lobster fishermen? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, so they want, they basically want it for bait, whereas we want it for food. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably like, these things are gross. <laughs> gross. Eat my bait. Yeah, lobster is a trade up. We're gonna get into that too. Here, this is a better, better view of the nets here. It's strung all the way across the whole deal. So it's a pretty serious operation. But uh, if you if you follow what Native Americans do, they'll do they've done the same thing for salmon run. But yeah, they'll they'll dam up the full river and then they'll catch their huge a huge allotment of fish. Same kind of design, a weir, drive the fish up in a certain area, take all that they need and smoke them for for the year and get ahead of the calories. So we're over here. At just right auto to pimp out the car and uh, we got a bunch of stuff from LP adventures and we got the tires are going on we got a front bumper that's going on here with lighting put roof racks on it it's gonna be completely adventure friendly when we're all done with uh, protective plating underneath so with skid plating a trailer hitch so we can have a basket or haul the boat because we're gonna have a boat that we're gonna be hauling and doing some lobster in with so we just got, it, just got the tires off and we're getting into it now. Then we got these ones here, which are, cause it's like when you're backing up in the woods, you don't want to be bashing into the trees. We'll be doing enough of that on purpose. Those will get mounted here. And the, obviously the trailer hitch under there. And we're still waiting on some of the parts. So this is kind of crazy all happening under the gun here. In case you're wondering, we're trying to get all this done for tomorrow when we start the Wilderness Living Challenge. So this is going to be the vehicle that we're going to run with and it's going to get us everywhere. We've got some crazy places to go to get to and I know this is a passion project for Zach so if you guys want to see the whole build go over to his channel uh, Zach F or Maker and Mischief. What is it? Zach Fowler's, Fowler's, Fowler's Maker and Fowler's Mischief. Mischief. I always get it wrong. <laughs> Fowler's Maker and Mischief. All right, so we obviously haven't started the Wilderness Living Challenge yet, which means we get to eat normal foods. So we have steak, we got steak, asparagus, rice, and our giant minnow fish we're gonna be eating for dinner. So we'll see how they go. Wadobo spice is not a cheat for the Wilderness Living Challenge, we're allowed to use it, but obviously we're adding ample amounts of fat in the form of butter, which is the real cheat and obviously the rice too. Although as mentioned, I'm probably gonna be using some corn or massive flour because I think that might be the element that we need in order to win it this year, given the lack of, maybe the lack of fats um, and certainly the lack of carbohydrates. So see this to make a difference. I don't think Zach's gonna eat any of the carbs during the experiment. So we'll be able to have a, a little bit of a comparison. Zach's trying to get the butter to melt. He's trying to do a time lapse of the butter melting on his camera. So <laughs> the blowtorch out. Got steak, asparagus, um, I made some rice, mushrooms, all topped off with dobo, including I'm gonna add some to the rice as well. And uh, we've been picking away at the alewife. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. We are not going to be able to use this as a staple item unless we figure out a better way to cook them or a different way. They're just, it's just laced with bones. It's not like the basic uh, plan that you would get from say a trout or bass or walleye or even a pike. It has 
multiple rows of bones uh, above the rib cage all the way through the tail and we're just choking on them so even you can't even just pick it apart it's just it's just laced completely laced with bones so we could cut the heads off we could use them as a fish head uh, soup another idea would be to grind it up and just like put it through a food processor but <laughs> if we're talking about the wilderness living challenge we don't have the aqu i mean we could theoretically we, we're using modern tools we could just take 50 fish and put it through a grinder and make alewife smoothies for yeah. while we're on well, the go fish burgers i'm a little disappointed i gotta be I honest i know me too i don't i see him i don't know because when i cooked them over the fire last year and i caught them by hand i don't remember them being this annoying uh they they've grown extra bones since last year with on the last fish burgers you got a grinder no I do, I think. I've got a blender. I'll just Cook them. No. Cook them first? I don't know. You want to put raw fish in your blender? I guess it doesn't matter. It's got to get washed after anyway. 